Welcome to our panel, Cut the Complexity of Wireless Connectivity. I'm Nitin Dahad, Editor-in-Chief of Embedded.com and Correspondent for EE Times. In this panel, we're going to explore the complexity of different wireless standards that underpin the lives of consumers today. From Bluetooth to Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, as well as the emergence, or should I say, uh, revival of ultra-wideband technology, how do you determine which technologies to work with? How do you develop wireless products and solutions that exploit the, the best of multiple protocols and ensure coexistence? These are some of the questions that our panel of experts here today from Samsung, Google, HID Global, and NXP will aim to address over the next 30 to 45 minutes. So without further ado, let's dive straight in and meet our panel. Going around the table, or should I say the screen, I have Boon Lung from Samsung Research America's Standards and Mobilities Innovation Lab. Sanjay, who's the product lead for wireless and networking for Google Nest's Wi-Fi team. Ramesh uh, with HID Global. And Raphael uh, with NXP. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an introduction to what each of you is working on. Uh, well, let's start first with uh, an intro with, with who you are and then uh, tell us a little bit about something you're working on or you know, what's driving you. So let's start with Ramesh. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, my name is Ramesh Sambhukrishna Sami. I'm the Senior Vice President and the CTO for HAD Global. In my role, I lead a uh, corporate and global R&D organization driving HID's strategic technology direction and aligning technology strategies with the business strategies. My team here uh, is responsible for a lot of uh, innovative solution creation in the area of RF technologies, IoT, mobile and cloud platforms, ID credentials, biometrics, data science, and user experience. I'm very pleased to be part of this panel. Thank you. Uh, so, Boon? Yeah, hello, uh, I'm Boon Long Ng, and people normally call me Boon. I'm a research director for Samsung Research America. Uh, I oversee R&D uh, projects on system design and solution development for wireless technologies, and they currently include 5G, Wi-Fi 6, and UWB. Uh, my team incubates new use cases and develops the uh, corresponding solutions for smartphones and also other smart uh, devices. In one of the more recent projects, my team contributed to the new UWB 802.15.4Z standard, as well as the solution to enable UWB for nearby share and smart things fine for the recently released Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and Galaxy Z Fold 2. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the panel today. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Sanjay Nora, product lead for Google Nest Wi-Fi over in, uh, in Google, uh, where I'm responsible for our mesh router platforms. Just really happy to be here with you today. Thank you, and Rafael. <clears throat> yes, hello. Um, well, I'm very honored to be with all the gentlemen here in the panel. Uh, I'm Rafael Sotomayor, um, Executive Vice President and General Manager at NXP. And the business line name, my business line name is Connectivity and Security. And just like the name says, uh, I am responsible for driving our solutions to create uh, ecosystems that foster connectivity and security. So we have products like uh, mobile wallet with NFC and secure uh, elements and secure operating systems, uh, tagging with whether it's NFC, RFID, um, connectivity solutions with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, 802.15.4, uh, ranging technologies like UWB. And so we we were we believe in driving ecosystems. We uh, are in the working group of the connected home over IP. I'm sure we're going to mention it today. Um, which is focused on simplifying compatibility between IoT devices for, from various suppliers. And we're also a founding member of the FIRA consortium, which is, um, you know, the, the, the goal is to provide seamless user experience between um, solutions uh, that use secure fine ranging uh, from UWV. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, so we have a really great panel here today. Um, so let's uh, uh, put a, a question to each of you now. Um, we, 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 we hear a lot about the benefits of all the various next generation connectivity technologies, but each has their own merits, depending on whether you're designing for a low power product, whether you're designing for an application that needs real-time response or where low 
latency is vital, or for secure access. And then there's short range and long range connectivity technologies. So let's ask our panel for their insights on some of the decision making needed, uh, use cases and trends of what they think is really hot right now. I'll start with Boone at Samsung. So you recently announced the fir world's first um, ultra wideband enabled Android phone. What's Samsung's long term vision for uh, ultra wideband? And can you share some thoughts on how ultra wideband complements other wireless radio technologies in the phone? Thank you, Nitin. Uh, we believe UWB has immense potential uh, because of its ability to provide spatial awareness and directional sensing capabilities for smart devices. Of course, there are quite a number of wireless uh, connectivity technologies on the phone because they complement each other based on the applications and use cases. Uh, a technology can be particularly suited for a certain function, but it's also very common now for multiple technologies working in conjunction to bring the best user experience. For example, in the application of localizing another device with a phone, uh, Bluetooth is suitable for supporting always on device discovery due to its low power consumption. But after the discovery, UWB spatial sensing with more accurate ranging and directional finding can kick in. Uh, on the other hand, Wi-Fi and 5G will continue to support uh, high throughput application. Uh, with regards to our long-term vision, uh, enabling UWB for device device applications like what we have introduced for nearby share and smart things fine, they are only the beginning. So we expect to see more and more use cases and application that we could only imagine in the past actually becoming realities with UWB. Uh, to name a few examples, uh, hands-free secure access with digital key on, on the phone for some smart homes and smart buildings will soon be possible. Uh, Location-based services, they were not possible before, can now be expected with UWB enabled uh, centimeter level uh, localization. Uh, to realize this vision, um, it would be important to foster a robust open ecosystem so that all stakeholders can come together uh, to develop uh, new use cases and build a strong interoperability certification program. Uh, Wi-Fi has the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance. Bluetooth has the Bluetooth SIG. We envision the FIRA consortium to play the same important role for UWB. So we are very excited uh, to work with NXP, HID, and other companies in the FIRA consortium to help realize the uh, UWB vision together. Sounds good, the focus on uh, UWB. Thank you, Boom. Um, we'll turn to Ramesh at HID. Um, what technologies are you most excited by and how do you see these working together to make access control easier? With a broad uh, portfolio of products and solutions uh, we have in HID, through which we power trusted identities of worlds, uh, people, places, and things, there are many new technologies that we are quite excited about. As you might know, many of our products are packed with multiple RF technologies, such as NFC, BLE, and Wi-Fi, to address various needs of our customers and provide a better user experience. If I have to pick one particular RF technology, that we are most interested in and also is of uh, more relevant for this particular forum, I would pick ultra wideband UWB. As Boone said, you know, UWB enables a higher level of accuracy in positioning capabilities along with increased data security compared to other RF technologies. UWB also is more immune to RF interference, so it functions better in high traffic settings. These capabilities, we believe, will enable a much better seamless user experience in providing hands-free access control in your workplace, hospitals, schools and universities, hotels, home. Because of its fine-ranging capability, we believe it will enable many new location-based services and device-to-device -device IoT applications, both in consumer products and in industrial setup. As ASOB Loy and HID Global are leaders in secure access and identity solutions, we are quite excited about the potential of UWB technology in managing access to physical and digital places, things, and identities. So th thank you. Um, now let's turn to Sanjay at Google. What technologies do you see enabling the smart home and why? And how do you recommend getting these technologies to work better together, independent of the protocol or brand? Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, 
you know, it's interesting. People talk about the smart home and rather than smart, because we're not really quite sure what that is. Uh, we prefer to think about our mission in terms of how can we help our end users? Uh, how can the home actually be helpful to them, right? How can we make them more productive? How can they have the experiences that they desire? And how can they have peace of mind so they know that the things that matter to them are actually on track and they're aware of them, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to deliver a strong portfolio of devices and services towards these goals of creating a helpful home. And to do that, we want to get technologies to work better together. Uh, of course, we have to address the fundamentals, right? You must start with a whole home, robust Wi-Fi network. And that's realizable through a really dead simple mesh system these days. Uh, you wanna make sure that that's the fundamentals. But then you have to look at low power technologies like 15.4, BLE, because this awareness comes from sensors and other battery operated devices where power consumption is so critical. And we know that we can't deliver that through Wi-Fi and we have to do that through 15.4 or BLE and such, right? Now, once we tie all these things together, the experiences, however, are delivered by the software that tie all of these technologies together. And, and our point of view is if we do our jobs right, the users in fact should not even have to think about what, what the technology is, but they should just be really delighted by how easy it was to set up how convenient it was to interact with the home and get the information that they need. And this information should be delivered exactly when it needs to be and where it needs to be, right? Uh, so what we do at Google is we start with the user journeys as we call them, which is what is it that users are trying to do? What is it that they're trying to understand about their home and what can their home do for them? And then we develop the architectures, the layers, and the technologies, which we work with our partners, such as NXP, to pull these things together. When we see that a technology doesn't quite exist yet, we try to invent it or we try to adopt it. Uh, we've heard some examples of that here today. And uh, you know, we can see evidence of this through our ecosystem of partners and our helpful interactions that we deliver to our end users through various modalities of interaction, depending on the context. So for example, if you're looking for a voice, you know, voice driven hands-free interaction, uh, and just because I have so many assistant devices in my home, I will say, okay, G, turn on the backyard lights. Uh, that's something that I'm able to do very easily every day uh, without stepping outside, right? Uh, we have displays which can serve as a, as a touch control hub and point for your home. So you can centrally have entertainment delivered, control your lighting, control your media and such. And then, uh, you know, finally the Google Home app, because all of us have these really nice mobile phones uh, that allows you to have mobile interactions with your home as well. So you can get the information and do the control that you're trying to do. So that's the way we see all these technologies coming together to deliver the use cases and the helpfulness to end users. Wow, okay, that's really great. Um, now, Raphael, as a core technology provider of so many wireless uh, protocols, what does NXP see as the biggest challenge and opportunity for the industry? And what do you feel is needed to overcome some of these challenges? You know, I just finished reading a book that it was the name was called Obstacle is the Way. So I'm gonna answer the question in a similar fashion. The challenge is the opportunity. Um, and we talked about it, uh, Sanjay alluded to it in, in, in multiple ways, but, but more and more devices are getting smarter and they're getting connected. Um, today, today's home is not surprising to see 20 or more connected devices. And we know that this number will, will grow exponentially in the next few years. And by the way, today, I'm not talking about the demand uptake that we have because of COVID, right? Of laptops and tablets and voice assistants and over the top services. Uh, I'm talking about more and more about devices that <clears throat> just even a few years ago, never, we never thought of, of them being potential targets for connectivity. So you're talking about you know door locks, lights, kitchen appliances, smoke detectors. Uh, and if you go into industrial, the, the list is, uh, is even, even longer. Each of them or these segments have uh, different requirements, different cost points, form factors. Um, there's not a necessarily a one size fits all in terms of technology, like you, you alluded with the question. And there's unlikely to be a winner takes all scenario, right? In these markets, it is a fragmented market and very likely will remain fragmented. And so if um, if you look at uh, at the white funnel of technical and, and, and time to market needs, uh, in order to, to, to seize the opportunity, 
right, and meet the challenge. Uh, a, technology, a technology vendor like ourselves in NXP, we must we must offer a, a comprehensive portfolio of, of connectivity te- technology options, right? It, it going for our customers to one company for Bluetooth and another for 8215.4 and maybe one for, for Wi-Fi, it's just simply not practical, not effective, not costly. Um, we must simplify software. Software is key. These are open ecosystems, right? This is where companies' products must interact with one another. Um, and so minimizing the software burden through, through you know, really good SDKs, uh, reference applications, pre-integration uh, is fundamental. Uh, same, same goes for simplifying hardware complexity. There, there is, like you alluded, multiple, multiple type of technologies that support multiple antennas, uh, different power profiles, um, different PCB footprint requirements. Uh, we're going to have to deliver coexistence techni- techniques that allow um, various technologies to, to, to operate seamlessly, reliably, predictably. Um, and then let's remember that some of these companies are not big. The companies are addressing IoT and industrial, right? So we must offer support uh, flexibility. We must offer technology accessibility. And so it helps a great deal to be able to rely on technology suppliers like NXP that are able to address um, these challenges uh, with with uh, end-to-end solutions. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, that's quite important as well, actually, um, providing some kind of reference for some of those smaller companies. Um, Thank you, Rafael. Now I'm going to put a roundtable question to all of you. Um, what do you see? Uh, what do you each see as the hottest trend in connectivity, and what's the most significant challenge associated with developing solutions to enable it? Ramesh, let's start with you. Sure, Martin. I would say one of the key factors for successful adoption of any new technology uh, is is really enabling. A delightful user experience, and that is particularly true in UWB as well. Uh, in my view, creating interoperability and a robust ecosystem are key for adoption of technologies like UWB. Without interoperability, we cannot achieve consistent user experience, as we explained. You know, uh, creating uh, you know a seamless hands-free access control, whether you are getting to your work or going to a hospital or or checking in a hotel or coming back to your home or opening the car, right? So all these different use cases, you know, user would expect a consistent, seamless user experience. And that's only possible if we can ensure interoperability between various devices uh, and and we can only scale if if it works interoperably from uh, the products and technologies from different companies. And that's why we have set up uh, FIRA Consortium with the help of industry leaders and technology providers to really promote UWB and also, more importantly, ensure interoperability by uh, defining certain common specifications. So that, I think, is one of the biggest uh, uh, challenge as well as opportunity for enabling technologies like uh, UWB. Okay, so I think what you're saying is really user experience is important. For that, you need interoperability and an ecosystem. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Now, Boone, uh, in your view, what do you see as the hottest trend in connectivity and what's the most significant challenge associated with developing solutions to enable it? Yeah, I guess my view will be uh, quite similar to what Ramesh has just mentioned. Uh, as more smart devices of different kinds are introduced in the market, um, there's a need for these different smart devices to be talking to each other. Uh, interconnected smart devices can greatly improve human device or machine interaction, making it uh, easier, more intuitive, uh, less obtrusive uh, for a human to interact with devices or to perform a certain task. Uh, for example, UWB digital key solution on the phone means that it's more convenient for one to unlock his or her car with just the phone. Uh, simply pointing your phone to another smart device could activate it or perform a pre-programmed function. Uh, if the smart devices have sensing capability, interconnecting them would enable better understanding of the context before triggering an action or response. So the technology will continue to become better over time. Uh, the most significant challenge is actually to keep building and maintaining a 
strong open ecosystem that various companies and developers can collaborate uh, to build use cases and ensure interoperability. So this is why uh, Samsung uh, is very committed uh, to industry alliances like the PR consortium uh, for you that to be. Thank you. Right. So um, actually, I'm seeing a, a, a common thread here, and that's really a collaborative interoperability ecosystem. Um, let's, let's, I mean, maybe we'll hear something similar from Sanjay. Let's see. Sanjay, what do you see as the hottest trend in connectivity and what's the most significant challenge associated with developing solutions to enable it? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, we continue to see this concept of the helpful home as one of the hottest trends in the industry. Uh, there's certainly a lot of protocol fragmentation, which is a, a key challenge for us in, uh, which is affecting all of us actually in our collective ability to deliver on this mission. Um, there's been a lot of growth in this industry. Uh, there are currently many competing yet lightly differentiated smart home protocols which is resulting in a negative impact to our partners and to end users. Uh, for example, manufacturers and partners incur increased costs because they must support multiple lightly differentiated software protocols and the SKUs are not interoperable, right? For, so for example, a sensor from one company can't interoperate with the sensor of another company because of this protocol fragmentation. So this ends up impacting end consumers who are quite uncertain about compatibility and it results in uh, very frustrating purchases and a very frustrating setup experiences, uh, which is also fragmented, right? So all of this has actually reduced the rate of adoption and growth in this critical space uh, versus allowing it to reach its full potential. So what we are seeing is uh, Project Connected Home over IP, also called Project CHIP, is a key initiative in addressing this pain point by working with hundreds of world-leading organizations and thousands of uh, individual experts in various areas, such as even in the Zigbee Alliance, uh, who have expertise in IoT, privacy, security, and more. Uh, we can leverage all of our collective learnings, uh, and we can contribute technologies and develop a unified protocol to address this issue very quickly. Okay. I'd, like, I'd like to ask an additional question, which is not on the script here, so if that's okay. Sure. Okay, so um, Sanjay, you talked about you know, sort of that whole interoperability. Um, how how can you actually? I mean, everybody is saying about ecosystem and alliances and cooperation. Right. But, um, do you see a, a lot of movement in, for example, in chip? Um, where do we see the first products that you know you can say you know plug one to another and 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 uh, it'll work? When when do we see that happening? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think it's I think it's coming together, right? It's a it's a it's a big initiative spanning many companies across the ecosystem. So by ecosystem, we mean uh, semiconductor vendors uh, developing really really great solutions on the chip side as well. I mean, the the lowercase chip side, the the the, the actual silicon side, uh, the protocols, and then of course uh, the industry players, right? Like. The, the Samsungs of the world, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples, just uh, coming together and uh, making sure that we're doing this thing collectively in the right way for our users to simplify the user journey, right? From thought to procurement, to setup, to daily interactions and value, right? And and so I think that this the spec is coming together very nicely. Uh, the teams are collaborating and uh, you know, we can expect to see significant movement in 21 in this space. That's my That's my belief. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, Raphael, yeah, what do you see as the hottest trend in connectivity and what's the most significant challenge associated with developing solutions to enable it? Yeah, so let me, let me talk about it. What, a, what an incredible time uh, to be in this industry and, uh, and to be a consumer, to be honest with you, uh, is we've seen the intersection of, uh, of incredible compute power at very accessible cost, uh, the, the the advent of AI, and then the intersection of, of great connectivity coming. So it's going to be some really, really, really interesting uh, next five years where, where incredible products are going to come in. And so um, when you talk about trends and in, in, uh, hottest trends in connectivity, uh, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you three. Three that I, I think they are driving, are going to drive a lot of very interesting uh, uh, user experiences. Uh, one is we talk about the exponential growth of connected nodes, right? Whether sensors, uh, new devices, devices that that never had connectivity, now they have it. Um, 
all this, I guess, nodes being connected to uh, to the network um, will require more efficient Wi-Fi networks. And that in itself will drive Wi-Fi uh, 6 adoption. I, I think the Wi-Fi 6 adoption is going to be driven uh, because it has a dramatically better high density performance and capacity, and it's just a, it's just a better network. It, and the notion that that the Wi-Fi six is only for for big stadiums and public venues and 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 only for high performance, high throughput devices, I think that notion will change. And what it means is that we will see a myriad of Wi-Fi six uh, uh, solutions um, that emphasize different attributes, uh, whether it's low power or cost, or some of them will continue to push performance. Um, and, and the way we see it at NXP is that we, we are going to address uh, uh, with our roadmap the different needs of Wi-Fi 6. Two, security. And, and when I talk of security here, I'm, I'm talking about securing the edge. Uh, today, security is, is an afterthought. The, the challenge uh, that we have today with security is it is nothing more than insurance. It's, it's something that today consumers don't value necessarily. And, and I. I predict this will change. There will be a lot of industry initiatives uh, that, uh, if not even government mandates, that to create certification uh, requirements, certification bodies that will establish different levels of security for the products. We take a position in NXPS as a leader in security that everything, we're incorporating security in everything in our edge products, connectivity or microcontrollers. And the last one, we, we, we spoke quite a lot of them uh, by, by some of our panels, which is spatial awareness. I, I contend spatial awareness become ubiquitous. If you're connected, you're going to be spatially aware. And, um, and if, you, if you think of the analogy, right, that uh, today everything that we do in our daily life um, relies on, on spatial awareness, right? Every interaction that we have with objects, physical objects, uh, obviously relies on our ability to understand how far they are from us, in which direction. And so as um, I think as, as machines and devices begin to, uh, to take over our, our, our more mundane task or even, even anticipating right, some of our actions, spatial awareness will be a key in able to make it happen. And so knowing with high level of accuracy in a tri-dimensional way where an object of interest is relative to us um, will trigger completely new use cases. And so this is the reason why we and XP believe very strongly and, and we're a provider of UWB and a, and a founding member of the, of the, of the FIRA consortium uh, that we already spoke about. And so we are really, really excited what technology bring in the next five years in terms of new and uh, and completely richer user experiences. Thank you, Rafael. Um, so, uh, well, that brings us to the end of today's panel, but not to the end of this great connectivity conversation. And what I, I think um, I'm picking up from this is, yes, there's complex complexity of you know lots of different wireless protocols, but shouldn't really think about it in terms of that sort of particular technology or on that particular smartness, you need to look about the whole uh, look at the whole sort of environment, the user experience, and then figure out how that maps in. And then you know, look at sort of interoperability between different sort of um, devices as well as systems, as well as people, and then figure out how the ecosystem can collaborate to do that. If that's a fair assessment, um, so. Um, that said, I'd like to thank all our panelists for their time and insight today. And for our audience, I would encourage you to take a few minutes to complete the following survey and to submit any questions you have for our guests who will respond by email to each. Oh, I also believe Raphael will be virtually available this week should you wish to speak or meet with him. Thank you all and hope you enjoy the rest of NXP Connects. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.